What's up guys, it's Drag, and I didn't make you wait too long. Let's talk about the top five best blasters of 2019. All of these are exceptional blasters in their own rights at their own price points, but uh, some are better than others. It was overall a pretty good year for blasters. Virtually every major player in the space had an awesome release. So let's kick it off right at number five with uh, something chaotic. All right, so this is the X-Shot Chaos Orbit. Now, this is the pump-action primary class blaster that represents their entry into the rival space. Rival here being my colloquial for the spherical, sometimes dimpled, sometimes hexagonal uh, ammo that, uh, that's pretty sweet. It requires hop-up tabs. It's usually CQB-esque type ammo. However, uh, it's opened up the space for a lot of these higher performance blasters. And don't worry about it. If you're blinded by the light, I just wanted to flex my gold edition. The gold edition was a special one that was sent to not just me but a lot of different influences in our space and I think that that was really really cool way to kind of announce and launch their entry now what makes these special well both of the X-Shot Chaos Blasters that we've seen so far have these uh, these super cool follower style magazines here where uh, you can tell that this one holds 14 internally no magazines required but you load through the follower which is just very novel very innovative very cool what makes them special well this is a great shell profile it's sweet for CQB the integrated optic are actually kind of cute, kind of cool. Uh, gives you a tack rail here, and then kind of a pseudo-esque tack rail here. No batteries required, very flush uh, all the way around. This is one of the best designed blasters from the least expensive, some would say cheapest, uh, competitor in this space, and I think this is really, really cool. So a tactical, almost shotgun-esque sort of blaster. This is really uh, a pump action rifle uh, sort of blaster, but one shot at a time, back, forth, and firing. Uh, solid, solid performance out of this guy. Still looking forward to cracking mine open and modifying it. I'm kind of debating whether or not I want to pump up the jam on the gold edition or not, but I'm absolutely in love with this blaster. I think that it's really, really cool, and it's priced so incredibly affordably for something that uh, that is a serious contender in the rival space. You can get into this for very little money indeed. So I think this one's sweet, but we're just getting started, guys. Let's move on to number four. Our number four blaster is just another strife shell from the, the mothership, but uh, this one's seriously cool. Just the sheer amount of work that went into this, and I, I think I know the designer behind the actual aesthetics of this. This is a real swan song for them, and just a phenomenal piece of work. The molding everywhere on this is the, the final, like, kind of iteration of this uh, design where they were like, let's chop shop a bunch of different stuff in from this workshop that the kids are hiding from the zombies in. So as far as storytelling element, it's phenomenal. You've got a razor flip foam back here for a pseudo display. This is actual one-to-one -one rebar molding back here for the, uh, the thumb hole grip. Then you've got a circuit board over here explaining why this one has some special features. A pretty decent, almost like kinda, this is like a shock spring as the foregrip, nuts and bolts up front, still giving you rails below, up top, and a built-in stock that while a little small, uh, is certainly great for smaller nerfers. Now, it did retail for 50 United States dollars, but I think that you got your money, and I'll tell you why in the dark. Charging, 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 kapow! That's too cool. So those are lights and sounds that mimic the hobby, which let's be real, originally mimicked the blasters that Hasbro was releasing. So Hasbro back in the, the golden age was doing things like the laser fang, and then they gave us things like the Firefly Rev-8, which had integrated glow and light technology. And then the hobby went completely off the walls with New Zealanders making some of the sexiest resin parts that we can flood with LED light, uh, ammo counters that have in like super bright LED displays, like lots and lots of cool stuff. And so Hasbro has taken that uh, back and spun it into this. We've got firing indicators up here. We have charging in two different uh, scenarios, really making the most of this shell. In addition to all the cool stuff, like you've got spark plugs firing, you've got uh, conduit pipe up here shooting lasers. Like in a world where HVZ fantasy play is making its way onto the actual shelf at Walmart and Target, this is the final form of that. I can't imagine it getting better than this. And uh, while it is quote unquote, some nerfers will complain 
mean that it's just another reshell. I actually really like that. The Strife is a phenomenal platform. Uh, we've done a lot of different work for it. We've filled out pretty much any sort of motor or which way to make this a build for HVZ or make this a build for competitive uh, with high crush, low crush, lipo, etc. kind of power. There's plenty of space in here for a battery. This is a great blaster if you just like stock blasting. This is a great blaster to give your cousin because even with nothing in it, it's still like a fun kind of role play-esque blaster. Uh, I, I always have enjoyed blasters that'll give you those kind of elements of play without full uh, features. So if you run out of darts in this thing, you can still like pew pew Star Wars style. And I think that that's very cool in and of itself. So for the, the least enthusiast amongst us to the most enthusiast amongst us, I think that this is a sweet, sweet blaster. I'm really looking forward to at some point live on Twitch, I'm gonna do a full paint job of this and really showcase uh, Maddie's work here because I think uh, this is one of the best shell Zombie Strike has designed since they parted ways from their Wild West theme, and it's really, really cool stuff that deserves more than the, uh, the generic half paint job that Hasbro's been giving us for years now. Coming in at number three, this is my boomstick. So the Adventure Force Liberator is a serious contender in our first dart zone blaster on the list. It's a pump action springer that'll handle massive, massive spring loads and has Mossberg style loading underneath. That in and of itself is pretty cool and delivers the hits. Now, it does only deliver those hits when modified. In its stock form, it shoots a little bit light, and I honestly am not entirely sure what the reasoning for that is. It's got a grip built-in safety, but the thing that you can't beat on this is the price. Uh, I picked mine up for 12 United States dollars. It's got great ergonomics, fun sci-fi feel, and really just I wanted a tactical shotgun in Rival for the longest time. And while Hasbro has given us gimmicks before in the form of the Atlas, and insists on shoehorning their top slide uh, P90-esque magazines into a lot of their other contenders. This one's short, sweet, to the point, and $12! What? Uh, just super affordable, super cool, a very sneaky blaster. There was no hype for this one at Toy Fair. It just sort of showed up at uh, Walmart.com and it seems to sell out almost instantly every time it does because it's clearly very popular. It's a really cool shell molding and I think they found a serious winner in this one. Hopefully, because it's doing well, Dart Zone will keep doing these unique and kind of innovative things in the rival space, which we already sort of know about because uh, it looks like they're gonna have the first uh, rival revolver on the market very, very soon. So that is the Liberator. Not too terribly much else to say about it. Sure, it has team panels, but I, I'm not interested in any of that. It was crazy easy to modify. It's a lot of fun to field, and it, it hits pretty hard once modified. The only detractor for this thing on the list, because the price is great, the ergo is great, the, the form and function is phenomenal, is that uh, it's, it's a little light in stock form, but I'm sure they'll get better at that as they go along. And like for a tactical shotgun that you can spin, I think uh, longtime viewers of the channel know that that is absolutely my jam. While 2018 was a step back for the Prometheus, 2019 is serious over the mothership. So the Perseus is easily uh, the best rival blaster of all time. Now I say that uh, with a little pinch of salt in that all flywheel rival blasters perform the same, both stock and modified really. But in terms of value, even at full retail, and I've been picking these up at $55 every time they go on sale recently, but even at full retail of 100 bucks, this blaster is the spice. It is fantastic. So you've got a full auto machine gun, like with a vector-esque foregrip and a built-in battery all for a hundred bucks. And that is, that's stock performance, guys. That's unreal that that's stock performance. In stock form, the top tray holds 50 rounds and ejects very, very quickly to clear your jam. Slaps back in just as easily. You've got a full other jam door up here, so it's a very resilient blaster. But at 100 bucks, they give you a charger and ejectable, rechargeable batteries, which actually have a slightly higher uh, voltage rating than what the alkaline equivalent would be in this case, probably leading to some of its exceptional performance, both in terms of its rate of fire and its overall FPS. It's comfortable, it looks great. Uh, I would never be caught dead with a blue one outside of Jared's epic nerf battle. 
but uh, this is easily my favorite blaster from Nerf this year. It's honestly my favorite blaster from Nerf in the last two years. It is really, really good. It shows sound design principles, lots of iterative testing. Like, this is a great Rival Blaster. It was all the best features the Rival line has had since its inception, crammed into one compact speedball-esque package. I really, really like it. My one gripe, this is poorly designed. This should be just a nubbin. There's no reason for it to be a claw, simply because for right-handed operators, who are definitely gonna take advantage of this bandolier point, the bandolier goes on like this, your right hand is here, and when you slam this down or pull it up, you're gonna be clawing at your belt or pulling up your shirt every time, depending upon how you hook this claw. Fortunately, in modified form, it's exceptional. Not just good, not just great, exceptional. All of these parts come to us from my friend Luke over at outofdarts.com, but you can not only get a switch plate to take it all the way up to 3S and a sneaky, sneaky battery door letting you access an XT60 connector while still maintaining a lot of that rival DNA, which I think is just awesome. <laughs> so in addition to being able to power it off of a better battery source and removing that claw to turn this into a very simple sort of ejection system, the real winner here isn't the rewire, isn't the extra FPS and the improved rate of fire. The real winner is this. Now there's a free version of this on Thingiverse right now, but this is a magnetic paintball speedball style hopper attachment that dials this thing up to I think 150 rounds total it lets you add a ton more ammo capacity to this guy bringing it up above a stock nemesis and certainly letting you kind of lean into that high rate of fire you empty a Percy's very very quickly in its stock form that would be my one downside at epic nerf battle when I was playing with the stock one really the only time I've ever played with a stock one seriously I think I got about five seconds of continuous fire before I had to pull a pod belt and dump a new one in so uh, it was a lot of work and a lot of belt for what was realistically a minute of continuous consecutive fire. There's like a real sweet spot where the rate of fire has to be good enough for burst fire but not so good that you're just empty entirely. And I think that trigger control plays a large part in that and I'm not docking the Percy's for that at all. I would much rather have a super robust motor powering this conveyor belt inside than the alternative. But uh, the Percy's is just incredible. If you can pick one up for anything under its uh, MSRP of $100, I highly Highly recommend it. And then if you've decided that you want to take it up to the nines beyond that, uh, definitely check out Luke over at outofdarts.com. He's got a lot of different options for it and it really makes it into something that's just nice. So what could be better than that? So it should have been obvious that this would be my pick, finally. We have an actual company designing blasters actually for us. And what better number one blaster of 2019 than this? This is the Dart Zone Pro Mark I Collector's Edition, and it is ridiculously sweet. Getting stock ranges of 170 FPS, this is the first blaster made by a toy company that I think really elevates the industry into the hobby space. This is their way of saying, we acknowledge that some people use these as sporting equipment and we are willing to make something exclusively for them. It is a phenomenal product. It's very well designed in terms of its overall like comfort, ergonomics, structural integrity. Uh, yes, it looks a lot like an AR-15, but it turns out that if you give humanity a ton and ton of time to iteratively design a product such that it's comfortable for a shooting sport type thing, uh, golly gee, don't they come up with similar profiles. Anyway, I like everything about it from the fact that they made custom competitive darts in the form of the new bamboo darts to achieve that performance. I like that it is a metal barrel. I like that it is a breech. I love that the accessories with it are actually usable. You've got an AFG, which is admittedly my favorite. You've got these rubberized grips both on the stock and the grip here. And you've got iron sights that actually aren't that bad. Uh, my only two gripes, I suppose, would be uh, that the rings are just a little floppy. I've never liked this system for takedowns. I assume it has something to do with shipping, uh, maybe. I don't really understand the purpose of them, particularly in a blaster where the breech uh, is an omni sort of breach and it'll just fire more or less anything. My only other little gripe is that while you can throw any sort of AR-15 uh, compatible stock onto this stock tube and get excellent results, the stock one, it seems to be like in some units, perhaps not all of them, the stock stock, so to speak, 
uh, collapses pretty easily. And I also have a sneaking suspicion that it's some sort of mold error inside here. Uh, and it's just a real shame because it, uh, it's a really good stock. It's got a rubberized pad on the back. Uh, I've gotten around that by cutting PVC stock blocks for mine. If you've ever modified a long shot, you know exactly what I mean. Uh, I haven't found a good solution for the rings yet, but I think my buddy Van James has. Got to look into that a little bit more. Overall, I think that it's a great product. It's really well designed. I can't help myself. Sometimes I want to like full operator with it, but uh, good muzzle brake. And while everything here is great, this is what I'm most excited for. These are real half-length darts that actually perform amazing. Uh, a real half-length magazine and a half to full-length adapter being made by a company that's actually meeting its shipping date. So that means that we can finally have half-length shots, half-length loadouts, and a half-length blaster that uh, exists. Full injection molded, super sweet performance. Uh, the reloads are, I think, available for these, which is awesome, awesome stuff. And while like, there are a couple of little things that I could pick apart, like I wish that they were more compatible. Honestly, companies have no uh, obligation to be compatible with the aftermarket. As much as I wish that I could use Pro Mags and Talons in the same loadout, uh, I think that working around that with a, an Ambi Magwell is what it is. Um, but uh, overall, a company is making half-length magazines and half-length darts. Uh, the reason that this is the number one blaster of the year is not just that in terms of performance and in my opinion value, it is the number one blaster of the year. Given that it can both play in super stock and compete at the highest actual level of a competitive nerf play, I think that it's just really sweet. The thing that I'm most excited about, that says Mark 1. And Mark 1 implies to me very heavily that at least they're considering making a Mark 2. And man, how cool would it be to have a company supporting Halflinks as a full platform? Easily the thing that I most excited for at New York Toy Fair is going to be hunting down Dart Zone and seeing if I can get them to leak me some information about a possible Mark II in 2020. If they're going to keep supporting this, I would love to see new blasters, particularly not collector's edition blasters, because I know that there are definitely some people, particularly around the holidays, who wanted to get in on this, but had to wait, and now it's sold out, and that's a shame. So hopefully there's good news in that regards, but I'll have to wait until February to, to hunt that info down for you guys and get back to you but overall just an awesome move forward from a serious company in our uh, in our industry and I think that that covers it I mean we got a little bit of something we have something from uh, two separate companies that previously would not have been uh, as major players on this list I think this is the first year ever that the number one blaster has not been a Hasbro blaster which is Wow, uh, very, very telling about the industry as a whole, especially given that the competition was probably the best rival blaster of all time. I think that that is crazy, crazy cool. So uh, again, as always, these are just my opinions. Go ahead, comment section down below. Uh, it's not censored, it absolutely works. Let me know uh, what you guys think. If you have a better top five list, I would love to hear it. Um, and uh, I think that, that more or less covers it. If you'd like to purchase any of these blasters, I'll have links in the description box below they are Amazon affiliate links and it actually means the world to me if you shop through those Amazon affiliate links I've been trying to do one video every day in December and you guys making your holiday purchases through those links even non nerf uh, purchases through that top Amazon link is just absolutely huge for me this time of year and I really really appreciate it I mean it every time I say it much love nerf on drag out <laughs>